One of the most empowering aspects of self-portraits is that you can dress yourself up in any imaginary clothing. I definitely believe in power outfits and the way they can really change your mood and make you really confident. I really like to use fashion and accessories in my self-portraits and it's quite an important way of self-expression for me. I like to draw portraits from memory just because sometimes I think they're actually way more expressive, but if you don't know how to do it, um, you could get inspired by a photograph or by just looking into the mirror. I'm going to show you a trick on how to create a more expressive and loose sketch using a light box. Why I really like to work with the light box is because I don't like to have a pencil sketch on my painting and also with the light box you can do as many sketches as you want and you don't have to worry about getting it right. So this could be a photograph or a realistic sketch that you did looking in the mirror. And now I'm going to show you how to create a more loose and expressive sketch on top of it. So what I like to do is I use a different colour for another layer so it's easy for me to see where I'm going. Sometimes like it's good to just work faster to create a looser sketch or sometimes you just want to change things around. Like I think the original sketch looks a little bit grumpy so I'm going to try to work on that expression. While you're sketching, you don't have to worry about it looking super realistic. Like you can just see what works for the illustration. Yeah, so I'm going to start sketching the tartan pattern. With this sketch, we just want to create a very rough guide for our final illustration just to know where the colours are going to go. I'm quite happy about this expression, but I'm going to try to draw the garment once more because the shape looks a bit odd. So we can just use a different colour of pencil to create another layer and we can see exactly what we're doing with this other colour. That's the beauty of working with the light box, that you can just work on different layers and combine them together. Okay, I think this looks good. And now I'm gonna to try to create another layer, combining the red and blue together. Great, so this is a sketch I'm happy with and this is why it's really good to use the light box because even if I was not happy with this one, I could just do another one on top. Sitting down in front of the camera is an act of vulnerability itself. Um, secondly, it's allowing yourself to tell your own story, right? I truly believe that we should be allowing our experiences to drive our art. And there is vulnerability in telling your story and self-portraiture is just one aspect of how you can essentially do that. Before you start shooting, there are a few things that I want you all to keep in mind. The first thing is to make sure that you have enough space to shoot with. If you're shooting outside, that might not be an issue, but if you're shooting inside your house, just make sure you have enough space for your backdrop, your backdrop stand, as well as wherever your camera is placed. Once you've figured out that you have enough space, you want to make sure that your backdrop is in order. So make sure that it is sitting securely on your backdrop stand. Or if you don't have a stand, just make sure that you hang up your backdrop on a wall or whatever might work best for your portrait. And then you also want to make sure that your camera is secure as well. If you're using a tripod, make sure that it's sitting properly. If you're using a stack of books as well, just make sure that your camera is secured. We do not want any broken equipment, okay? And lastly, make sure that you have your remote handy and ready to go. We are shooting with a large open window. So this is really great because, well, the window isn't open, but a large window. I'm gonna open these panels up in a bit to get some more light. Um, but you wanna have a large window if you're shooting inside just to have some natural light for your photos. I don't use any kind of studio lighting just because I just 
don't have any so this is what I usually go to and do for my photo shoots and then I have my ISO if you can see there at 500 so that is what that looks like that's kind of the angle I also want to shoot at I really like this downward angle so I'll go over there in that kind of open spot there so here I am shooting my self-portrait. Now the key to this is just to shoot as many poses as you can. It can tend to feel a bit silly. Um, so I definitely try to take some breaks in between and really just encourage myself throughout the process. And I also do look at the images as I'm going through as well. But really the key is just to get as many different poses as I can to have some variety in my images. And as y'all can see here, there are a number of different poses I have. I have some where I looked away. I have some where I kind of had more of the flowers as the focal point of the image. And I do like the blurriness in the shot. Um, one when I was looking directly into the camera. And again, just really trying to have a variety of different poses and looks that I can then refer back to when I'm picking my favorite photo. All right, so we have the photo selected and now it's time to jump into Illustrator. Once you have your photo in, let's just make this a little bit bigger. So one of my biggest things that I would say to pay attention to, or even to do as you start tracing is to create the foundation of the photo first. So I'm thinking more of big shapes. So my big head, that would be one shape. So for this exercise, I'm going to be using the pen tool and the pencil tool to sort of go and create these outlines of the different shapes, which with the pen tool, I'm basically creating one anchor point, tying it to another, and then manipulating the shape to curves or maybe to straight lines. With the pencil tool, I'm literally just going through and tracing. So very, very simple process, using the pencil, using the pen. Um, just to create those anchor points and to create like a solid outline. So one thing to remember, it does not have to be exactly like the photo. As you see me drawing, like I'm not hitting every area of my face directly. I might, you know, cut off a couple of corners or like curve things that are really like more angular. It's really your interpretation and it does not have to be exact. I cannot stress that enough. It does not have to be exact. You would drive yourself up, up the wall trying to make it exactly like your photo. So for more like longer curves, I believe I use the pen tool more often versus the pencil tool. And if you notice, this is like a very smooth element right here, but it kind of looks like it's a dip that is like more cut in versus like smooth. So you can click on this anchor point and you see this little, little circle guy, pull him out and it just smooths it out. So it's not so much of like that, that dip. So at this point, we have the basic face shape done, connected those two anchor points. Um, we kind of bring this one out a little bit. All right, so now you want to go in and sort of do those main areas. So we're gonna jump into the hair. I'm going to use the pencil tool just so I have that sort of like free hand. All right. So let's fill that in, send to back. So using the arrange tool is very crucial in this project. So going to object, arrange, and then bring to back or bring to front, depending on like what you're doing. For this case, with the hair, you didn't want like a, a slab of hair just right there. You wanted to bring it to back, which is why we locked the background so you're able to do that. So Send to back, boom. Now we want to do this part, which again, using the pencil tool, sometimes I nail it on the first try with like bigger, wavier things, sometimes I don't. And then that's when I sort of do the bottom part first. So let's just try it. All right, so you got your pony. And of course your neck will end up hiding this little piece that's hanging off. Now let's jump into the facial features. I'm gonna go in with the eyes. Now eyes, eyes and hands are like super hard in my opinion. I found that it's easier to create the impression of an eye if you add as many elements as possible in a simplistic way, if that makes sense. I went ahead and created the general outline of each shape, which includes like the main pieces like the head, 
your neck, whatever outerwear you have. The detail part is one of the, the funnest parts because that's where you really add in your personality and that those levels of detail. So whether it's a nose ring, some type of hair tie, a hat, different things that make you you. So we're at a good place when it comes to sort of body, like facial and just like outfit details. Um, feel free to take it to the next level and even add more shadows, more details, whatever you wanna do. Just different things that you can do to sort of find your style because that's the whole point. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.